What's up guys? Uh, apologies, it's been a while since my last movie, so uh, I've just come back from a tour in Japan and I've um, also been pretty busy in the studio working on new music, so I haven't had really had much time, but um, I will try and get some stuff done soon, uh, some more stuff done soon. Um, as you can see, I have just updated to Cubase 9.5. So I figured I would just uh, go over a few of the little workflow enhancements that um, 9.5 has brought for us. And there's a couple of really cool little features uh, that I'll run through quickly, um, like my favorite couple of features in Cubase. Um, firstly, uh, I've recently been a big fan of the Cubase browser, but there's been bugs in it since forever. Um, being that when you search uh, through stuff that's tagged, you'll see I've loaded it up here now, and it takes forever to scan through your tags. Um, so sometimes when you're browsing for a, for an actual audio file or something, you'll click on a directory, and it'll it'll be like quite a delay before you actually start seeing your um, your stuff pop up. Uh, so what they've done is in the the left uh, the right hand window now. You've now got a uh, control panel uh, or a control room panel over here. You've got your metering. And then in your media section, you've got a file browser. But this file browser doesn't use the tags at all, which is great because it actually, it's a direct file browser like uh, OSX's Finder or whatever. So there, see, there really is uh, no delay anymore for, for finding files. So... Um, you can do all the same stuff from here. You just grab your, grab a dr like a drum sound, and um, you can just create a sampler track directly from here, which is great. Nice and simple. That's looping. Um, now another thing with the samplers, which I really like, uh, if you have an instrument channel, let's just grab a silent, for example. Okay, um, a cool thing with the samplers now, especially for bass lines when you're trying to, um, I've done a video about this before, about resampling bass lines. Um, they've just made this a whole lot easier now. Uh, with if you select your track and you kind of, uh, you can just draw in a note. And also whatever effects and stuff you do will be carried across as well. So let's just... Uh, for example, just stick a little bit of distortion on this bass sound. There we go. Um, if you open up a new sampler channel now, you can actually just drag a note directly into the sampler window and it'll render that MIDI note and actually map it to the keyboard. So you can mute the silence channel now. So you have a, a sampler channel mapped with that note that you've prepared there already, which is great for stuff where you want re-triggering to be really quick. Um, let's for example, if we can just do that. So yeah, super, super handy little, um, little workflow enhancement there. We'll just remove that one quickly. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you Previously, if you were working on a track where you're running a loop and um, you wanted to have a part that's one bar long like this, you would have to either duplicate it like this. The problem being um, that each one is separate, so if you make changes to this one, uh, you have to then go and delete these, go back and recopy those again. Um, there was a workaround with this before if you hit your... Um, set up over here and you enabled uh, independent track loop this one here um, you could set an independent track loop by hitting that on and then you'll see this one turns green it's normally red but I've changed all my colors around you'll see a different loop there and um, now we can go and uh, draw in some different notes let's just do that You'll see, you'll see when it plays now. Um, so 
So notice that it actually plays this loop constantly, even when these ones are different parts. So that was a great way to kind of just um, work on stuff whilst the loop was constantly running without having to kind of reset the loop each time. But there's a much better way of doing that now. Um, if you look at this little handle over here, that will do the same as duplicate. But they also, uh, changes in this one only affect that one. Unless you do that again, but this time holding down shift. And you'll see this little equal sign on these, which means these parts are now linked. They're instanced. So what you can do, if you if you move these around, you'll see they, they actually move around on all the parts at the same time. Which is super handy when you're working, especially like electronic dance music stuff where you're kind of using loops quite a bit. That's a great way to do it. Um, the other big thing that uh, 9.5 brought was the uh, addition of curves. So you now have the option to draw automation curves and they, they're really good. You can get really, really, really fine with these. Um, if you grab just the midpoint, you'll be able to draw in curves. Unfortunately, they don't link to the parts, but then you just have to redrag those out again, and it'll copy the automation data with it as well. So that's that's new to Q uh, to nine point five as well. Um, another thing that I'm going to do quickly is uh, just render. Let's just render one of these. Just bounce that in place so we have some audio. And um, this is a function that I was really excited about as well. Um, I'm going to just hit scissors tool. If you hold down Alt, you can um, automatically slice the whole thing up into 16th notes like that. So let's just uh, set our loop to these over here. And let's say I wanted to add some effect to the audio directly previously you'd have to go um to right click uh, an audio file then plugins and you could apply processes and plugins one by one destructively to uh, an actual audio file uh, what you can do now is I've, I've remapped this key to d i'm not sure what the original one is but um i'll just hit d uh, you have a direct offline processing window which pops up now um, what this does is you can actually stack processes and plugin chains um, onto direct offline, um, onto directly onto the wave files. So let's say, for example, uh, let's do a fade out, and you can see how it updates on those things. Um, you can play around with your fade out settings. <laughs> Um, additionally, you can actually stack plugins as well. So we can, for example, just go and add a few. Uh, let's add another one. Uh, maybe modulation. Uh, let's go with this. Which is super handy, this. So yeah, once you once you're happy with these, you can uh, you can actually apply these permanently to um, to the wave files just by right clicking over here. Just select make all permanent. And there you go. So that's super handy as well, just for uh, audio editing. Do some really cool stuff with that, uh, without doing all the automation and so on. Yeah, there was a couple of other, a uh, couple of other little um, changes. My small things like uh, new 
um, user interfaces for some of the uh, Cubase plugins like um, Vintage Compressor. I think it was mostly the compressors that uh, that got a bit of an update. But um, yeah, these are kind of my favorite uh, little enhancements that they've made. Uh, they may seem small, but anything that saves me time, I'm very happy with. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you guys. And um, I'll hopefully, um, I am working on some tutorials for Sonic Academy this month as well. So hopefully I'll have some time to do some more of these and... Uh, put up a few of these a uh, few more of these studio tech tips and uh, studio blogs um don't forget to hit like and uh, give us a follow uh if you have any comments drop them in the comment box below uh, it would be great to hear from you guys and let me know what you guys want to hear if you if there's anything specifically you want to get some tips on let us know and we'll uh, we'll make a plan to do that all right anyways take care and uh i'll chat to you guys soon cheers